When I first built my BMW E36 Turbo LS Swap, I wanted to do it by showcasing how you can build a really fast, powerful car that's also reliable on a budget. And I really feel like I was able to do that with this car. But additionally, I want to showcase how we can do that as well with the Factory 5 Type 65 Shelby Daytona Coupe. And what we're going to do is build something similar to this, but different in a few different ways. It's not going to be turbocharged. It's going to be supercharged. And what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take some LS3 heads that I found on Facebook Marketplace that I got for a good price. And we're going to put some dual valve springs on it so it can handle a lot of horsepower. In a turbocharged application like this, you can get away with the stock 317 heads no problem because you're going to be forcing a lot more boost in it than you normally would with a supercharger. But with an LSA supercharger build, it does make a lot more sense to get better heads than those old 317s, which are cathedral port. LS3 heads are rectangle port heads, and they're really great for supercharging because they bolt right up with no adapters and they flow significantly more air at higher RPM, which is really where we're going to need it if we want to make some good power with this thing. These springs are going to allow us to run a pretty aggressive cam in this car that's going to allow us to wind up to about 7,000 RPM. I'm going to go over exactly what you need and the best ways to do this on a bench. You can do a valve spring swap on a car, but it is insanely easier to do if you have it on a bench. So let's get started. First off, the one thing you're really going to need is you're going to need a valve spring compressor tool. They sell a whole bunch of them, and a lot of them are cheap and a lot of them are good. I, I use this on the E36 Turbo LS, but I'll put a link to this valve spring compressor in the description below. You can get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. I like this compressor because you can do two valves at a time, and this is a time-consuming process, so that saves you time. The next thing you're going to need is an 8 millimeter to take off the valves or to take off the rock. My, the key with this is I like to keep everything all together. So I'm just going to move this over to the side here and then we can get working on the actual valve springs themselves. What you want to be careful of is having the, the stays. You don't want those flying out and hitting you in the face. So it is good to wear some protective goggles. It's never hit me in the eye, but it did hit me in the mouth which that didn't hurt that much, but you definitely don't want to get hit in the eyeball with this stuff. First off, you want to thread this in, and it looks like, like, oh my God, it's cross-threaded, or it's weird. It's going to be at an angle because the, the valves are at an angle. So this gets threaded all the way through. Sometimes I actually like to use a little bit of oil to lubricate this bolt as I tighten it down. I'm also using the spring washer down here. I'm using it for uh, so it can help lock in easier. That way that this doesn't rotate while I'm tightening everything down. This one, it's going to be easiest to put this here over top, right? Then you stick this guy over it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our bolts, tighten it down, and then we'll be able to work our way down with the compressor, just like that. And then as we tighten this down, these valve springs will compress. There's a trick you're going to want to do on the other side to make sure that the valves don't drop out either. I'll show you in a sec. I'm actually going to take a t-shirt to stick underneath the actual head itself so that it's like I'm stuffing the entire valve with something that'll spread itself around in the head. So then the valve springs will stay seated. That way when it's all tight, it'll compress itself to the point where it'll allow me to kind of get these four pieces out and that'll allow the whole spring assembly to come out. So I'm just using a half inch to tighten it down. Like I said, spaced out. I think that is a good spot for it. So I'll go ahead and tighten that down where it needs to be. We don't go crazy with an impact on this. We just get it nice and snug. We don't want to strip anything out. Once it's held pretty good, we're kind of good where we are. What I'm going to do now is I'm also I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of oil. Just a little bit. I don't even mean a lot. I mean like just enough to get over the threads. That's going to allow this thing to stay nice and lubricated as I tighten it down because it is a lot of force. Let's see if I can do this. See that one's starting to lift up. There's that there. There we go. So they both popped out. One, two, three, 
four. These will not be reused. The kit comes with brand new clips, although these look like they're in fantastic shape. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly back it out. With that out, we now have both old valve springs out. Now we've got to remove the valve seats. Since we're not like reusing these, I'm just going to just wiggle them out. Okay. All right, so with that out, I'll show you what it looks like underneath. So having this on there prevents the valve from actually falling out, but we could take a good look at them now. You can see they are in decent shape. You know, sometimes you can get you can go through and clean these up a little bit, but they seem okay. They seem to be in pretty good shape. I think what I'm going to do is just do them individually. That way I don't misplace what valves <laughs> go where. But the same. We'll put it back in and we'll get going on reassembling. So put it there like that. Shut it back down. And then now when you're putting them on, you can see the one flat retainer valve seat that's in the bottom is completely flat here and the other one you get looks a little different it's got grooves and little little uh, indentation in the top this is the top one this one goes in the bottom so these go here and they go here then you need to get your valve seals so there you see now what it looks like with the valve seat and the valve seal and now we have a spring now these springs to tighten them down are significantly harder a lot more spring force that's required to actually get these down these go on here put that one here with the actual updated valve seat here here put this on then we're going to tighten them down and then put these guys on brand new now like i said the amount of force required to get this, these springs compressed are significantly more. And because they're not lined up properly, you just, you just want to make sure that everything is kind of going in where it's supposed to. You might have to back it out and repeat that process again. I'm kind of trying to work it in. All right, so they're there. That's on. So hold my fingers. Try not to have it pinch me. As you can see, it's got to be right where it's got to be. And that looks like it's going to work. And then put the other side, as I back it out, I'm going to do the same thing. So this side's going in first. I'm just trying to hold my finger where it's got to be in place there. I think that's good. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to put it in. And if I can rotate it around enough... To give me some space. Not quite there. Almost. Okay, holding them kind of in place. Should just kind of slide in. Okay, now that those are in, I'm going to show you a trick to make sure that they're seated in properly and that they don't fly out. So what we're going to do, I know it sounds weird, trust me here, you just take a little block of wood, put it right on the top, and give it a little tap. Just to make sure that it's seated in there properly. Not a hard tap, a little tap. That'll let, that'll let you know that it ain't going anywhere and that they are in. So those are now in. You can see the difference the dual springs are. It definitely was harder to go in. So now we're going to repeat that process throughout the entire uh, all eight cylinders. There's 16 ones that we're going to have to do. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'll do this again straight over top so you can see it. This one here with the flat bottom is your valve seal on the bottom. These are your valve seals. They go over top of that. There's the rest there. Each push them down, should go down with a little effort. Just make sure they're nice and seated there. Then we take a spring, boom, boom, 
And then the stepped retainer with the staircase facing down like that. And then we're gonna clamp them down and put the retainers in. It's always good, if, especially if you don't have an extra set of hands, to get just a small pair of vice grips. I don't, it's not clamping it down, it's not holding it hard, but I literally just have it there holding those retainers steady because the intake side and the exhaust side um, don't always go down at the same time. So if you can't hold both of them, if you don't have someone else to help hold one of them, you can hold the other side by hand and then just use the vice grips on the other side and then they'll pop off on their own as you start to loosen it back up which is pretty cool. And it's just like having a buddy holder there for you, which I find very helpful. Big, big plus, get, get yourself a set of vice grips if you don't have a buddy that can hold that down for you. So now that our cylinder heads are all done with our dual valve springs, we can go ahead and start the teardown process with the 6.0 liter LQ4. Now, the main reason you want to do an LQ4 when you do a project like this, especially uh, when you're doing something with square port heads is, uh, you can't fit square port heads on anything smaller than a six liter. So a 5.7, uh, 5.3, 4.8, can't do them on. I want you to take a good look at this now because when we're done with it, this thing is going to look like a million bucks. Let's so make sure you guys stick around and stay tuned to watch all of those videos because we're going to be going rapid fire on the Type 65 very, very soon. So if you can't wait until next week's video, make sure to check out these videos that I already have ready to go.